Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the exhaust gas recirculation system, or in plain English, the EGR valves. Now, this video is meant for those of you that are just getting into the car hobby, maybe need a little refresher on some of the components inside your car, especially when it has to do with the emission system, or maybe it's something you never really knew that much about, why it exists. But by the end of this video, you're going to know what the system's supposed to do, how it does it, and the main components that it contains. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned. We'll jump right in. Now let's start by talking a little bit about what the system does. EGR valves first appeared on GM cars starting around 1973. They are there to reduce one harmful pollutant that comes out of the tailpipe when your engine is running. And that pollutant is oxides of nitrogen. Now, how are oxides of nitrogen created? Well, inside your car's combustion chamber, temperatures can reach several thousand degrees during the engine running process. Uh, about 3,500 or 4,000 degrees is all it takes for the oxygen in the air to combine with nitrogen, which is also in the air and form oxides of nitrogen, a harmful pollutant. So what engineers found was that if they reduce the temperatures in the combustion chamber by about 500 degrees, they can eliminate this from happening. How do they do this? Well, they do it with an EGR valve, which while it's open, introduces a little bit of recirculated exhaust gas into the combustion chamber. They found that this will reduce combustion chamber temperatures by about 500 degrees and prevent oxides of nitrogen from forming. All right, now that we've talked about what the system is supposed to do, let's talk about the components that make it up. First being the actual EGR valve itself. Now there are several different types or flavors out there, negative back pressure, positive back pressure, integrated electronic ones, etc., etc. Uh, it all depends on what engine and emission setup you have, as well as what your fuel delivery source is, whether it's carbureted, fuel injected, things like that. Uh, the second component that makes up this system is some type of vacuum source, whether it be ported vacuum from the carburetor should never be manifold because the EGR valve should not be open during certain engine conditions, or it could be a uh, source from a throttle body injection system also ported, or it could be electronically controlled by a solenoid and the engine computer, depending on the model year. And the last and final component of the system are the actual or is the actual passage itself. And I mention that as a component because something can go wrong with it. They can get clogged up with carbon and you wind up with a condition that looks like you have a malfunctioning valve. So if you ever have that valve off, make sure you clean the carbon out of those passages. So now that we've explained the components involved in the EGR system, let's talk a little bit about how it's supposed to work. Number one, the system should be closed at idle. You should be getting no exhaust gases routed back into your intake manifold during idle. That's why it's hooked up to a ported vacuum source because when you crack that throttle a little bit and start pushing on that gas pedal, the valve should open and it should start to introduce a little bit of exhaust gas into your intake manifold. That exhaust gas will then displace some of the oxygen, which is also coming into the intake manifold and cause a cooler burn inside your combustion chamber. That's it. Very simple system. That's all it's supposed to do. Now, when these systems fail, they can either be stuck open or stuck closed. Uh, if your valve is stuck closed, you're going to notice a knock especially at part throttle or full throttle. Uh, if that happens, a quick fix is to just retard the timing about five degrees. Also, if you've deleted your EGR valve, you're also gonna need to retard that timing about five degrees because timing on these cars, especially from the 70s on up, 
is a little advanced to account for the EGR valve. And that's why some of the early cars, especially in the early to mid 70s, had drivability issues because they never factored that in. So that's it guys, just a quick little video on your EGR system, how it works and what components are involved. Hope you were able to learn something today. Thanks for watching.